The law of inertia says that in the absence of forces, an object will continue to move in a straight line at constant speed. It's often called Newton's first law, but it was certainly known before Newton was born. I hate to disagree with Newton and his law, but it doesn't work for me. Look at that. It stops. It doesn't stay in motion. That's right. And that's because in many situations, including this one, there is a force which is stopping it. The roughness of the table produces a force which we call friction. And when that block moves to the right, the friction force pushes it back and stops it. Where do we get into a situation where it will work? Well, we've got to find something for which there is very little friction, and we've got one of those over here. This is a metal beam with holes drilled in it. We're going to blow air out of the holes so that this puck will rest on a cushion of air with very little friction. Sure enough, without friction, the glider looked like it would keep going forever on one push. Another example of a frictionless system is these pucks. I'll put some dry ice into the puck put its top on, and when I put it down on a glass surface, it rests on a cushion of carbon dioxide and moves quite frictionlessly. It's almost eerie to see things moving with no friction. They move until another force, like a hand, pushes them in another direction. The real example or the real lesson here is inertia. That's right. In the absence of forces, things keep moving. Would you like to experience that yourself? I, th I think so. Good. Let's go. <laughs> That's when Professor Taylor showed me his hovercraft. It was pretty simple. Power from a vacuum cleaner made it ride on a cushion of air. And what a ride. My inertia carried me straight down the hall with just one push from the professor.